I put the song in, I was expecting a second verse. Only one verse on that one. Um, so I'd like to start with the solution, then go to the problem, and then go back to the solution. Uh, so the solution is pray without ceasing and give thanks. So thank you, Daniel, for uh, reading those verses for us from the beginning uh, of the service today. When I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about, it kind of a couple things happened, uh, which is normally how it usually happens, right, when you're trying to think of something uh, inspirational. Um, definitely not inspirational tonight, but I hope it's from God's word at the very least. Uh, so Daniel had sent out a note saying, hey, we're going to have a, a, a song about Christians in the workplace, and uh, that resonated with me. Uh, class, I said song, class, a class about that. And I'm like, hmm, that's really, uh, that would be really helpful to, uh, to really think through uh, some of the challenges that we're facing today in the workplace than the ones that we faced, you know, 30 years ago when we first came into it, or 40 years ago for some of you that may be retired by now. Um, but as I was thinking that, and then I was also reflecting on the fact that I'd been away so much because of work and haven't been able to worship here with you, and knowing that when I came back on last Sunday, I'm like, huh, yeah, this is home. This is home. This is where I'm supposed to be. And not being here, it just takes something away from you little bit by little bit. And you don't even realize it until you come back. And that's when I'm like, ah, that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. So pray without ceasing and give thanks. And it's interesting how the, the various verses that we're going to look at here in a minute um, actually have both of those concepts together at the same time. Give thanks, we'll read it again. Give thanks, rejoice um, uh, constantly, and then pray without ceasing. So that led me back to uh, the parable of the sower. So let's start with that in um, Matthew, uh, starting in verse, uh, Ma Matthew chapter 13. Let me go ahead and, and just start in verse 18. Um, actually not going to read the parable, I'm going to read the interpretation of the parable. So Matthew 13, uh, starting in verse 18. Therefore, these, this is Jesus speaking, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. Um, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives side by the wayside. But he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who received seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some 100-fold, some 60, and some 30. So the three challenges I wanted to just highlight here really briefly, because this is probably a whole sermon series on um, the parable of the sower. The rocks, no root. And the point is, is that if you have no root, there's nothing to fall back on. There's nothing to hold you in. There's nothing to hold you together when things start going wrong, which they inevitably do in this life. So for those of us that have that know or that have um, family members around us in this church that are new to Christ, um, let's help them develop roots. Let's help them develop what they need. And there's some that may have had roots that fall, fell away as well, but we need to help everyone develop roots and make sure that they're as strong as possible. The thorns, the thorns, I call it the, wor the world. Um, and this is where it kind of reflected back to me, how do you combat the world? Well, you combat the world in several ways. One is pray without ceasing and give thanks. Another is come together with your family as often as you can. And we meet here Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights and we have uh, group meetings uh, once a month. I hope we're getting back into that. Uh, we have singing once a month. So there are many opportunities for us to get together as a family in this uh, congregation. That's how we can combat the world and combat the thorns that come at us. But also, again, keep your focus on God. And then the good soil. Obviously, that's where we want to be. 
And if there are enough of us in the good soil, then we can help those that are fighting the thorns and help those that are fighting the development of their roots to be able to, or, or working to develop their roots. We can help them come along and be part of that good soil as well. So let me just finish off with the solution. Pray without ceasing. Let me start with Matthew 6, 9 through 13. There's one verse here uh, that I really want to emphasize, and it's at the end. <clears throat> so this is um, Jesus when he was asked, how should uh, his disciples pray? He says, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So if you missed it, it was verse 13 that I really um, wanted to hone in on. Do not lead us into temptation. Well, that's up to us as well. But when we see temptation, let's turn away. But really, it's all about God. God, deliver us from the evil one. That should be our prayer. And as we think about uh, the rocks and the thorns that come in our way, uh, let's always focus on God and keep him first. Um, and then 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, verse 17. Let me uh, turn over to that. That was uh, what Daniel read for us this evening. I didn't write it out. I thought I'd turn to it. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. Starting in verse 16, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and then from a give thanks, let me go ahead and finish it off, verse 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. So there's a lot of good verses right there. But here are the solutions. Give thanks, pray without ceasing. And then Colossians 3.17, a very similar passage. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And finally, Philippians 4 and verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Just in those, <clears throat> pardon me, just in those three verses, you see the combination of giving thanks and rejoicing and pray without ceasing. So let's take these words to heart. Um, whenever we're challenged, wherever it be, in the world, at work, or wherever, um, let's always turn to God, focus on him. Um, if there are any of you tonight that need to uh, come back to God, uh, or anybody that wants to um, name his name and be baptized and become part of the family here. We would love for you to do that. And we want to support you in that as we stand and we sing. <clears throat>